This morning, we are talking health with Dr. Scott Ackerman. An anti-inflammatory drug that is generally used for cancer treatment is now showing promise as a treatment of COVID-19. In fact, patients who have been given it are shown to have a numerically faster clinical improvement. Joining us this morning via Zoom is Dr. Scott Ackerman, a local oncologist. Good morning to you, Doc. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Jen. Good morning. So this drug is called Ruxolitinib. How does it work? So uh, ruxolitinib is a drug we use for myelofibrosis. It's one. It's called a. It's in a class of drugs called tyrosine kinase inhibitors. They're kind of chemotherapy, but not the, not chemotherapy in the sense where it's actually destroying cancer cells. But it's used in a number of cancers, and what it does is it it reduces the inflammatory response that we get with certain kinds of cancers, and what we have found that in patients with coronavirus who have a very advanced stage of coronavirus where it's in their lungs, these patients get what's called acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS. This is not uncommon. This happens after surgery, but it can be very life-threatening. And this is what causes patients to have to need intubation, to be in the ICU, this acute respiratory distress syndrome. So whatever we could do to reduce that inflammatory response is uh, can perhaps shorten the time someone's in the ICU. So this uh, uh, ruxolitinib has been shown in coronavirus patients to reduce what's called the cytokine storm or the storm of, 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 of inflammation that comes out of the coronavirus. And it reduces that and it shortens the time that patients are in the ICU and shortens the time they need to be on a respirator. So it's interesting because we interviewed a pulmonologist on Monday about a different anti-inflammatory drug that's typically used as, as a steroid that's also showing tremendous promise. It's called a dexamethasone. So it, it sounds like between the drug that you just mentioned and this one, I, I, I mean, can you use any anti-inflammatory then to help treat COVID-19? Yeah, well, these are the similarities. Dexamethasone is also used and they, and they found that this drug Ruxolitinib works as well, and maybe it's better. So there's more than one trial going on, all going on concurrently. Just like the vaccine trials, people are trying many different vaccines because at the end of the day, there's going to be more than one option for treatment, more than one vaccine, more than one drug uh, to treat the inflammatory cytokine response, uh, the, the, the uh, ruxolitinib as well as dexamethasone. So clinical trials have also begun using low doses of radiation. So interesting. How can radiation then help with treating COVID-19? So, you know, that's near and dear to my heart as a radiation oncologist. Right. Uh, we use radiation, and so I'm glad you asked about that. So it began in the early, early 1900s. We used radiation then in very low doses to treat certain pneumonias, to treat, to treat viral pneumonias mainly. And... Um, but it kind of fell out of favor for fears that the radiation could cause other long-term damage. These are very low doses of radiation, and there was never any data to show that these low doses of radiation uh, did cause damage. Penicillin and antibiotics came along, and most viral pneumonias um, uh, resolved on their own, and we used um, uh, antibiotics for bacterial pneumonias that would sometimes occur after viral pneumonia. So people did, did pretty well. But there's clinical trials going on right now in, at Emory University, in Italy, and in India, where we're losing very low doses of radiation, one hundredth the dose that we give patients with cancer, just a, a single dose of radiation to the lungs, again, to reduce the inflammatory reaction, to reduce the cytokine storm. This has been shown also to shorten the time patients need to be in the ICU and shorten the time they need to be on a respirator. It is fascinating, too, and I was reading up on that also, and it, it suggests that the side effects are really minimal as well. So we'll keep watching, and we certainly uh, certainly appreciate uh, your analysis and perspective of it as well, Doc. Have a good day. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jim.